Hi everybody, this is lesson five of week one of Matilda and today we are going to be thinking about what we've learned about the characters so far from what we've read. Uh, just to start off with though, let's do a little summary of what we already know of these characters. So if I asked you to choose just one word to describe each of these characters, what would that be? So Matilda, Michael, Mrs Wormwood, Mr Wormwood and Mrs Phelps. Have a think of one word that you would use to describe each of those. Okay, how did you get on? These were my ideas. Uh, for Matilda, she's very clever, isn't she? We know that already. Um, she's quite intrigued by everything, so that means she loves to learn, loves to find out new things. Um, and she's quite resilient as well. Uh, one of our Northway values, isn't it? To show resilience, to if you ever fail or make a mistake, then pick yourselves up and have another go. And I think Matilda's pretty like that really so far in the story, considering what the rest of her family are like. Uh, Matilda, uh, sorry, Michael, the brother, Okay, so he's not a very interesting character so far. So I've described him as possibly a bit boring, but also he's quite controlled as well, particularly by Mr. Wormwood, his father, isn't he? So I thought of that one. Mrs. Worm, uh, Wormwood, she's very selfish, doesn't really bother with the children, not interested in what they do, very much interested in her appearance though, how she looks all the time. So you could describe her as quite vain for that reason. And Mr. Wormwood, well, he's very demanding, okay? Um, he likes things done a certain way. He also likes to show off quite a lot about his success, doesn't he? So you could say he's quite boastful, might be a word you thought of. Um, quite a contrasting character is Mrs. Phelps, isn't she? She's really kind and caring and very considerate, particularly of Matilda. Um, finding out what her family is like makes her even more considerate towards um, Matilda. So that's they're the words I came up with. I hope you had a little go at that as well. So as I say, today is very much about using the text to answer some questions. So I have done another video um, of me reading this chapter aloud to you. So if you want to stop this video now and go to that one so that you can read and follow me reading at the same time, that's fine. But we're gonna now move on to a couple of questions based on just this chapter. Okay, so here's the first one. This is the first paragraph from this chapter. Okay, so Matilda longed for her parents to be good and loving and understanding and honorable and intelligent. The fact that they were none of these things was something she had to put up with. It was not easy to do so, but the new game she had invented of punishing one or both of them each time they were beastly to her made her life more or less bearable. So the question here is, what does this first paragraph tell us about how Matilda feels? OK, so it's not based on anything else that you've read so far or anything you think you know about Matilda. It's purely asking you to answer it based on this paragraph. So have a reread of that paragraph and try to come up with an answer for how you think she feels based on that paragraph. Okay, so here's a suggestion. Matilda feels she is very different from the rest of her family and she finds them hard to live with, okay? She wishes they were more like her and has to create her own games to make life better for herself. So that's summarizing what we've learned in that first paragraph. She knows she's different. Her ultimate wish is for them to be more like her, but she has to do something to make this situation better. So we use evidence from the text to create our own answer there. Okay, here's a few more. What has she started doing to punish her parents when they are beastly to her? So a couple of really important things to do when you when you're reading a question like this. I always say read it twice. Check you understand uh, what the question's actually asking you to find. So what had she started to do to punish, so that's a key word, when her parents had started to be beastly to her? So we now need to go to that part of the text to find the answer to this question, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find that little bit in the text, which is there. Okay, so here we've got the word, and if we can scan the text, so that means not reading it exactly word for word, but looking for a key word, so there's the word punishments there. So let's have a little look at this bit. So the thing that prevented her from going around the bend was the fun of devising and dishing out splendid punishments. And they were lovely. And the lovely thing was that they seemed to work. Okay, The father in particular became less cocky and unbearable for several days after receiving a dose of Matilda's magic medicine. So there is an example of what she actually did to punish them. 
And then there's the parrot in the chimney affair, which um, obviously caused a lot of mess and a lot of upset. So there's a couple of reasons um, uh, at the punishments that they did. So Matilda's punishment included giving her parents medicine that she'd made and sticking a parrot up a chimney. OK, so again, using the key words and then forming your own sentence around it. OK, what about this one? What is the dreaded box? OK, so have a little think and have a little scan through the text to see if you can find out what the dreaded box is. OK, did you find it? Here it is down here. OK, so this part in the text says, thus she was always forced to eat her evening meals out of a TV dinner tray in front of the dreaded box. So she's actually foot sitting in front of the television, isn't she? OK, somewhere that she doesn't want to be. She would much rather be reading a book or having an intelligent conversation. But she's called it the dreaded. It's something she doesn't want to look at, the dreaded box. OK, let's have a look at another question. OK, so all the time we're doing this, we are learning more and more about a character. Um, we are using evidence from the text to be able to back up, to give reasons, to justify our answers. So the next one says, how does the way Mr. Wormwood acts tell us about his character? So how does the way he speak, how does the way he act, how does the way that he does things, what does that actually tell us about him as a character? So again, have a little look. There is a section here for you to have a little look at. So maybe you could find some clues in there. OK, did you find them? So it's talking about the way he comes into the room. OK, so he's wearing these crazy colours in this suit, which obviously shows you quite a confident person. Um, and he sits down, clearly very pleased with himself. So he sits down in the armchair, rubs his hands together and he addressed his son in a loud voice. So again, that's telling you what he's like as a character. OK, well, my boy, he said your father's had the most successful day. OK, and he goes on to explain why. So here's an example of a, an answer. Mr. Wormwood is loud and pleased with himself, showing he's very confident and he likes to tell everyone how successful he is. This shows he's quite boastful and only interested in himself. OK, so what we've done is we've used his actions and the way he's behaving and the types of things he says to then find some describing words and form those in a sentence. OK, and this one, why has he had a successful day? So again, that's on this section here for you. So we'll have a look, a successful day. And here it is, it says actually there, a successful day. So we've scanned through the text and we found those words. Well, my boy, he said, your father's had a successful day. He's a lot richer tonight than he was this morning. He sold no less than five cars, each one at a tidy profit. OK. So in his eyes, he's had a successful day because he has had a successful day because he had made a lot of money selling all cars for a large amount of money. OK, now other characters might not think that was a successful day because that's not important to them. But we've been specifically asked to find out why he thinks he's had a successful day. And we've gone to the text and we've used the evidence from there. OK. OK. Last couple of questions that we're going to go through together. What does he do to the cars to make the customers believe that they are better than they actually are? OK, what does he actually do to make them believe that better than they are? Have a little look at the text that's on there and see if you can come up with an answer for yourselves. OK, so he's so dishonest, isn't he? He really is. The things he does to these cars, put sawdust in the gearboxes using electric drill to change the speedometer so he's he's reducing the number of miles a car's done on it and um, he's touched up with a bit of paint there might have been scrapes or scratches on it and um, so basically he's made these cars look a lot better than they really are and he's called the people that are buying them idiots and they were falling over themselves to buy them they couldn't couldn't wait because they thought they were getting such a good bargain so in answer to the question Mr. Wormwood makes the cars look newer than they are so that people think they're getting a better car than they really are. So again, shows just how dishonest he, he really is. Okay. And lastly, how does Mr. Wormwood's comment that no one in the world could give the right answer just like that, especially a girl? Now, how does that fit into the idea that he feels men 
are superior to women. Okay, so he definitely has the opinion, we've seen this earlier on in the story, that men, boys are much better than women and girls. Okay, but how does that particular comment um, back up that opinion? Okay, have a little think for yourselves. Okay, an example of a, an answer to that question could be, Mr. Wormund doesn't believe anyone could do a calculation like that in their heads, but he believes men and boys are better at everything, so he doesn't want Matilda embarrassing him when he can't do it himself. So the fact that she can do it has annoyed him quite a lot, hasn't it? But it's the fact that she's a girl and she can do it, okay? But that's making him feel really uncomfortable because that's going against everything he's trying to tell his son, Michael, isn't it? The boys are better and that he's the best car salesman. He's got a computer in his head. So basically he doesn't want Matilda spoiling any of that for him, okay? So we need to think about those ideas. So summarizing it is that he doesn't believe anyone can do it. And he certainly doesn't want Matilda embarrassing him and showing up that you can't do it. Okay, so there are a good few examples of how to answer questions like this. It's really important that you do what we've done and keep going back to the text to find your answer, deciding on your answer and then forming your own sentences to answer all the questions. Okay, you've now got an activity sheet to complete in the same way. Okay, try your very best at that for, you, for me and we will see you very soon. Well done.